Hello, my name is Zach Babbitt, and um, today I'd like to present to you guys about one of my very favorite insect orders, uh, Raphidioptera, otherwise known as the snake flies. This is an incredible group of insects that not a lot of people know very much about, so I wanted to take this opportunity today to educate you guys a little bit on them. So, before I nerd out about modern snake flies and their significance today, let's start at the very beginning. These insects are a real relic of the insect world, and are often regarded by entomologists as living fossils. That's because the earliest snakefly fossils date back to the early Jurassic. That was about 140 million years ago. Even more impressive is the fact that very little has changed over the course of this time. While their diversity has massively dropped, the actual insect's anatomy has hardly changed as you can see by this fossil's close resemblance of modern snakeflies. There were a lot more families and genera present in the past about seven different families. However, over the time, the snake flies lost a lot of their diversity. Today, there are only two families. Snake flies belong to the order Raphidioptera, which in Latin translates to needle wing. Today, the snake fly order consists of two families. These two families are Raphidididae and Inocelidae, with roughly about 260 living species. So, you may still be asking yourself, what the heck is a snake fly? To make things perfectly clear, these are not a fly. That common name is just an unfortunate association because these beauties are way cooler than any fly, except maybe the surfeiter flower flies. These insects are actually much more closely related to Neuroptera, otherwise known as the lacewings. Snake flies, along with Neuropterans and Megaloptera, which is the alder fly order, make up the insect clade uh, Neuroterida. Neuroopterida. That's how you pronounce it. Excuse me. <laughs> and snake flies get their name from their elongated and surprisingly mobile prothorax. That prothorax is the segment right below the head in the image you're seeing there, which is key in identifying these species from similar insects. They do have compound eyes like most other insects, but if you look at their forelimbs, you'll notice they aren't specialized like a prey mantis might. Again, this is very helpful in identifying members of this order. So where can you find these critters? Because I know when I first saw them, I wanted um, I bumped into one by coincidence, and ever since I've wanted to find more. So snake flies were once widespread and found across the globe. However, today they are mostly restricted to the world's temperate regions. Surprisingly, they are completely absent from the entire southern hemisphere. They are only present west of the Rockies in the U.S., as you can see here in the map, and they range down to the Mexican-Guatemalan border. However, the highest number of snakefly diversity is in Europe and Asia. The highest amount of diver diversity is found in Central Asia. Um, even when they are in the more southern portions of their range, they prefer more temperate habitats. And so they're usually going to be found at these higher elevations because they're more of a cold hardy adapted um, group of insects. With still some of these actual species being found up to 10,000 feet in elevation. Um, individual species are often very restricted, so there's a high level of endemism. So there's actually some species unique to just a few mountains in Asia. Um, they've even been recorded in some of the mountains of the northern Sahara Desert. So <laughs> don't let this otherwise terrifying photo of a larvae turn you off of snake flies. Just remember how adorable they're going to become when they're adults. Let's quickly talk about their life cycles so we can have an understanding on how these insects get so darn cute and how they make more equally adorable snake flies. These insects, along with all members of the superorder Endoterragoda, are holometabolous. This means that they're going to have four main life stages. They have eggs, larvae, pupae, and an adult. The adults of holometabolous insects don't really look that much like their larvae, which is quite different from the other insects which are going to be hemimetabolous. So those ones are going to have strong similarities between the adults and the nymphs. So this is going to include insects like praying mantises and grasshoppers and crickets. Holometabolous insects, however, like our snakefly, um, as well as moths, butterflies, bees, wasps, um, true flies and beetles, those ones, like I said earlier, are going to have a much um, are going to be much different than the larvae. They're going to go through those four different life stages, and there's going to be a lot of time for them to change their morphology. 
So, let's imagine that we're actually larval snake flies. Wonderful, right? So, as larvae, we're going to continue growing and go through these multiple stages. And each one of these stages is going to be known as an instar. So, we're still larvae, but each one of these multi-stages are instar stages. So, as we progress to each instar stage, we are going to be changing just a little bit every time, becoming a little bit more complex and a little bit more adult-like. <laughs> Um, and this is going to go over for the course of a few years, but now that we've been a larva for about two or three years, we're going to begin what's one of the most important moments of our lives, metamorphosis. As snake fly larvae, we encase ourselves in this pupil cell, and we begin more, uh, metamorphosizing and into adults, and this is going to happen when winter starts approaching, so actually when we're ready to make this change, or when snake flies are ready to make this um, change... Um, the main indicator for them to do this is when the temperatures get to around 30 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so just around freezing, and that's when that pupil casing is kind of initiated. However, once spring arrives and the temperatures warm up, we hatch from this casing, and we are the beautiful snake flies we are meant to be. So now it's time, it's the time of year for love as snake flies, so male snake flies must woe any females that they are interested in. Guys, this means you'll be doing your best to perform a courtship ritual where you'll groom the antennae and legs of the snake fly that has stolen your heart. If she's interested in breeds, then the pregnant snake fly will begin the most important task in a snake fly's life, motherhood. <laughs> that long stinger-like appendage that you can see in the picture there is actually an ovipositor, and it's a handy tool for laying eggs in hidden spots. The mew mother is going to go find her favorite spot, usually under some tree bark, and lay those eggs. Now sadly there isn't any time for the mother-child bonding experience that we all hope for and the female is off to meet the next nice guy and those eggs are going to hatch within a few days and then that whole cycle begins once again. Lastly, let's talk about their ecological value. First, how beautiful is this photo? Because, well, if you were a mite or an aphid this would be the stuff of nightmares. Snake flies are important and voracious predators to those aphids and mites, and they occasionally also eat pollen, but these insects are mostly carnivorous. So, as larvae also, they're very effective predators. They're going to be consuming small invertebrates and arthropod eggs. Larvae also play an important role, however, as the victims of parasitism. Larvae are the victims of a certain uh, group of wasps called the ichneumonid wasps, or it's a family known as ichneumonidae. And just like um, these snake flies, they also have an ovipositor. However, unlike the snake flies, which usually use the ovipositor to go underneath the tree bark, like I said earlier, ichneumonid wasps, in this case, are going to be placing that ovipositor directly into the snake fly and allowing the larvae to eat their way out. So it's pretty gruesome, but it's still an important part of nature. And that is a very important role of the larvae of snake flies. Um... Even as prey, these insects are still fantastic. So the adult snake flies, as well as the larvae in some cases, are really important food sources for a lot of the gorgeous birds, especially in Europe. Colored flycatchers, Eurasian tree creepers, and the great spotted woodpecker, all of these present, like I said, in Europe, um, rely on snake flies and a lot of different insect species um, for nutrition. So that's all I have for you. I hope you've all learned a thing or two about these wonderful little insects. Um, remember that snake flies are completely harmless to humans. So if you're ever lucky enough to spot one, be sure to take a picture and share it with your friends and family. The more people that know about these critters, the better. And lastly, remember to be respectful of them. While many people might just see them as just a bug, it's important to remember that these guys have survived for 140 million years on our planet. That's past the dinosaurs. They've been around since then and have outlived the dinosaurs. So these are beautiful, intelligent, and fragile little critters. So be careful if you decide to handle them, or if you're safely removing them from your house, just release them gently. They won't bite. They won't sting. They just want to be left alone. So if you see them, enjoy them, um, and just remember they're harmless. These insects will make wonderful little friends as you explore nature. Um, thank you so much for your time and interest in, these fan in this fantastic little group of insects. I hope you enjoyed it.